Hi YouTubers, um, just want to do a quick video. Uh, I've had a few problems, teething problems. Basically what I'm doing is connecting my Mac to my 42 inch uh, full uh, HD TV. I had a few problems with it because the edges of the screen they weren't being filled correctly and I was messing about with the overscan feature um, on the Mac just trying to find out what was going on um, and I ended up finding out my TV I think there's a few pr people having these problems my TV if you go to menu on there you go to setup this is a Panasonic Viera by the way um, go to menu you've got picture overscan mine was turned to on on my TV and I also had overscan on on my Mac um, that was causing problems because the screen wasn't fitting correctly and when I turned the overscan off on my Mac the screen was massive and I wasn't getting the full picture but now as you can see I've got everything and it's in full full 1080p as well um, which I'm really really chuffed with because I was going to get an Apple TV and I was humming and ahhing about it but now I've got this sorted and it's, it's working fantastic really really good with front row I've just um, just started to download uh, Wallace and Gromit in the HD like the, the whole um, all the episodes have done okay so how I did it was uh, I bought a mini display port to HDMI then I've got, sorry it's a little bit messy at the moment, I'm going to get a switcher box for the back of the plasma um, and then into the front of there okay there's, there's three ways you can do it on your Mac you can do uh, a mirror so it's your, your MacBook, whatever's displayed on your MacBook with the screen open is then displayed onto your um, plasma TV or external display the only thing with that is that my Mac can't output, the screen doesn't support 1080p resolution. I think it only goes up to like 1280 by 800 something like that. So if I'm mirroring that, obviously my plasma is only going to be displaying at 1280 by 800. So that's one way, which is okay, but then obviously you get the black borders um, around the screen. The third way is like an extended desktop, so you can have the laptop full resolution on the screen and then it's like a separate screen and then the screen displays in like a 1080p mode so then you can drag a window from your Mac drag it across onto the the, um, the plasma or the monitor so like I say extended desktop so you can start putting files at different places and use just to have a massive uh, display surface to work on and then the third way which I'm using is I believe people call it uh, like clamshell mode so what you do um, Apple reckon that you need to have um, this, um, the screen shut and you need to have a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard or a wired Bluetooth mouse and keyboard attached so when you close um, the lid on the, the Mac it then goes into sleep mode but the other way you can do it is hold on a sec. The other way you can do it is by using your Apple remote. So when that's in sleep mode, you plug in your uh, mini display port to your HDMI TV. Do you then just press the menu button, and then that wakes the MacBook up, and then what that does is then transmits full 1080p signal with the whole uh, functionality of the screen so you have all the the menus um, the dock etc on there and what I used to control it because I didn't want to buy more peripherals to have laying about so what I did I bought this app called uh, let's have a look. it's called air mouse so you click on that you load some software onto your Mac uh, which is free you just saw it said um, saw the, it said it was connected. So then this is a big trackpad. So if you have a look here, um, as I'm panning down, my dock will open up. As I'm going left, um, you can shake it, 
brings up the key ball to enter text. Um, if you, you can turn it portrait mode, you can click on this button here. And so, say you're in front row, it gives you the things for front row, iTunes, and Explorer. So you can sort of uh, back forward, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, so that's basically what I did. It's working really, really well. I'm really tough with it. And the screen, it's just, it looks, it looks so crystal clear. Really, really clear. Um, and yeah, and that's full, full 1080p resolution. Um, when I was saying about the clamshell, the power has to be plugged in. It won't work without the power. Um, um, but apart from that, it uh, works really well. I just wanted, because I had a few problems with the overscan function. So if you are doing exactly what I've done here, the same setup, clamshell mode down, but you're still getting the black bars around the edge, the reason why that is, I would say nine times out of ten, is that um, you, sorry, that, yeah, nine times out of ten, it's because the overscan is set onto your TV, plus you've got the overscan on your Mac. Turn off the TV one, and just rely on the Mac's uh, like graphics card um, to do the job, and it's it's doing a cracking job. Um, for for audio, what I've done because obviously the mini display port doesn't carry audio down. Um, I don't know if they're going to support that in the future, I'm not too sure. But what I did, uh, I've bought a, a Toshlink optical and then a like a 3.5mm adapter that you just click on. Oh, I can't take that off now. But basically that clicks on and then I've got that going into my B&W Zeppelin, the optical, the same, same connector there. Uh, it just clicks onto the end like that, it goes into the Mac, and then I've got exactly the same end that goes into uh, my Zeppelin, and it sounds fantastic. What I wanted to do was have to use this here, um, then plug that a lead from my Mac into this, into that end there, and then split it off. So an optical to my Zeppelin, and then an optical out to my um, my amp there so I could uh, use the surround sound but for some reason I don't know if the the light signal that I'm getting through this isn't enough but I'm not getting a feed to either device when this is plugged in so I'm just relying on from my Mac to my Zeppelin because the Zeppelin sounds great um, I hope that helps alright see you bye